Hey YouTube, if you haven't watched this video, I recommend you do. It'll make what I'm about to say much more meaningful. Now I'm going to give a quick refresher and make sure we all understand what the is ought gap is. Now it makes the claim you cannot derive an ought from an is. Wait, what does that even mean? Well, I think it's easiest to explain with an example. So, merely stating that this is a book doesn't tell me whether I ought to read it or ought to burn it or ought to put it back on the shelf. Just knowing that it is a book doesn't tell me how I ought to behave. Oh, I get what you're saying. Stating what is the case doesn't specify what I ought to do. Exactly. Gotcha. But, you can bridge the is-ought gap if you have a goal. For example, just stating that this is a book tells me that I ought to read it if my goal is to know what it says. So remember that, because I'm going to come back to it at the end of the video. Now, the purpose of this video is to take a look at life and purpose, to take a look at the evidence and try and answer the questions, are we designed, and can evolution be the designer? Alright, let's look at an example of design. Let's say that I designed some scissors to help my friends cut paper more efficiently and in order to make their lives better. Now the scissors were created with purpose, or the goal of cutting paper and making my friends' lives better. It has a proper functioning. Now you can use the scissors for whatever you want. You can use them as a paperweight or to open a can, that's fine. However, if one of my friends uses them to stab another friend, that is improper functioning. That goes against the goal the scissors were created for. They were created to make my friends' lives better, and using them to stab one of my friends goes against its intended purpose so it can have improper functioning. So here's an example of something which is not designed. All right, it's my turn. Okay, let's say a rock isn't designed. It's not created with a purpose or a goal, so there's no proper functioning. Because of that, you can use it however you want. There's no wrong way, so it cannot have improper functioning. So now let's talk about humans and look at whether it's more likely we're designed or not. Either we recognize purpose or we only assign purpose. If we recognize purpose, we must be designed. Alright, so here's an example. Uh, let's say that we haven't chosen any other goals other than one of these. Uh, I can drive to my grandma's house for the pleasure of seeing her, or I can drive into an innocent group of people for the pleasure of hurting them. Now, obviously, one of those goals is wrong. It's the seeing grandma one, right? No. <laughs> now, we should hold one of those goals rather than the other. It is our moral sense that tells us this is wrong. It is something that is hardwired into us. It is innate to know that some go there are some goals we shouldn't have. Now, this point isn't even really up for debate. It's self-evident. A common example would be, torturing innocent babies for fun is wrong. Of course it's wrong. I don't care if it benefits you, or if you enjoy it, or if you can get away with it. I don't care what your goal is. You shouldn't do that, meaning the action is improper functioning. So, if we are not designed, we are like the rock. We have no improper functioning. And if we are designed, we're like the scissors, and we do have proper functioning. Now, we know that we do have proper functioning, or that there's some goals we should choose rather than others. Therefore, we're designed. Now, atheism cannot account for being designed, so theism is a better explanation of reality. But there are two ways out of this. You can claim that evolution is the designer, or you can claim that moral experience is an illusion. Now, in this video, I'm going to show that evolution cannot be the designer. And in the next video, I'm going to show that our moral experience is not an illusion. Now, evolution cannot be the designer, because evolution is an evil lie from Satan. Ha, ha, ha. Ah! Alright, just kidding. But here's my real argument. Evolution is more like the rock analogy than the scissors example. At best, evolution could create a rock which happens to look and function like scissors, but it would still have no intended purpose or goal for its existence. Now, before I prove that, I should admit that evolution could create the illusion of a goal. But that's a point for the next video. Alright, so here's an example. Let's say there are a bunch of small rocks in a fast-moving stream. The stream will provide selective pressure on the rocks. Those better suited to not get carried away by the current will remain. Eventually, the rocks that remain will become worn down and smooth, 
becoming efficient at not getting carried away. They are not designed with the goal of not being carried away by the current. Remember, without a goal, you cannot derive an ought from an is. It merely is the case that they are really good at not getting carried away. So now let's look at evolution and natural selection. So let's say that there's a species of animal in the proverbial stream of life. Now life provides selective pressures on the species and those that are best suited to the environment remain. Eventually, the species become more efficient at survival. Now just saying that one happens to be good at something doesn't specify what one ought to do. Alright, one more example. Let's say that she happens to be good at killing people. Hey! Well, this doesn't, mean, this doesn't tell me how she ought to behave. Merely saying that she is good at killing doesn't mean that her goal in life is to be a killer. That is, unless she is intentionally designed to be a killer. He had it coming. Now, if she is not designed, then there is no proper functioning. No way she ought to behave. So saying she's good at killing before she has a goal simply doesn't tell me what she ought to do. If my goal is to kill, I ought to kill. If my goal is to save people, I ought to avoid killing. Saying I'm good at killing doesn't tell me what I ought to make my goal. Without having an intended purpose, I'm not obligated to choose any one goal over another. That being said, evolution doesn't want you to do anything. It merely gives you the abilities. Just like the she happens to be good at killing example. I merely happen to be good at surviving and reproducing. So, so what? what? Evolution and natural selection, selection simply don't solve the problem for atheism, and theism is still beta, better able to account for reality. So remember, God loves you, and so do I. And I get the last word because I'm the girl. Test everything and hold on to the good.